Argentina against Colombia. Aussie Art Dealers and Trevor Francis are with me here in the studio. Uh, Argentina unbeaten in 33 World Cup qualifiers at home. The last time they were beaten uh, back in September 1993. 5-0 the scoreline that day. Their opponents, you guessed it, Colombia. What's going to happen in this one? Trevor, uh, let's cast our mind back. Bolivia 6-1 winners over Argentina last time out. Was that a blip from Argentina? The altitude, or do you see something more apparent there? I think the altitude will always play a big part in uh, South American football. I think that uh, Bolivia have been particularly strong at home. But there were worrying moments throughout the game for Argentina. Uh, it appears that uh, Diego Maradona likes to play with a back three. And we've just had the teams come through. And once again, you know, that's the way he's playing this evening. <clears throat> I'm surprised that Zanetti's not in the starting lineup. Plenty of attacking options there with Tevez, Aguero and Messi. Well, Zanetti was at fault for a, for a few of these in this game though, wasn't he? Yeah, but I was about to say, Rob, that uh, you know, it's been a little while for him to wait. You know, he's had one or two warm-up games, but um, I think they're under enormous pressure to get a result tonight because you know, losing 6-1 to Bolivia, however you dress it up, it's an absolutely awful result. And he's had to wait a long time for this game to come along. Now it's here. The pressure's on Diego Maradona to get a win tonight. I thought I'd spare you the pain, Ozzy, of talking about <laughs> <laughs> that game there. Tell me, he's, he's had a few um, parting shots about the pitch at El Monumental ahead of this one. He's described it as a waste ground. Last weekend, um, an Argentinian rock band, Los Piojos, yes. <laughs> uh, played there. Now, what does that translate to? And, and, Something uh, like laces. Laces, <laughs> yes. And do you know know any of their well, tracks? The, they're kind of uh, music for young people, heavy metal, um, kind of protest group all the time, protest against the establishment, protest against the political situation, and so on. All I can, all I want to say about Argentina is, like like Trevor said, Maradona is under enormous, enormous pressure. He's playing three, 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 Verón, and the three little one up front. And and in the other hand, Colombia is playing a, a very, very experienced team. So uh, something will have to give, I will say. Regardless of how poor the surface is, Oz, he, he cannot come up with any excuses tonight. It's a game that they have to win. You know, we, we've just seen Brazil give a masterly performance, a resounding 4-0 victory. Yep. Now, the conditions there were particularly poor in, in Uruguay, but they have good players and good players can play on any kind of surface. So Argentina tonight, they cannot make excuses. No, They've no. got to go and put on a performance. Yeah, that's right. It's, 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 it's no excuses. It's uh, enormous, enormous pressure in, in, in Maradona and the players, the wonderful bunch of players. The people say it's the best squad in the world, or one of the best squad in the world, but they have to perform. And this is a, a, a game that they, they really, really have to win. And Maradona is all out to, all out to, to, do, to do that. Let's just put some Fresh on the bones of that one, this Colombia side, lowest scorers in South American World Cup qualifiers, joint lowest with Peru on six goals, uh, just one win in eight, they haven't won away in the World Cup qualifiers. Argentina, as my guests here were saying, must win this one, no excuses they say. What will the action provide though? Let's join our commentary team for this one, Terry Gibson and John Driscoll. Well, welcome along of all the teams, it's Brazil who've done Argentina a big, big favour by dispatching Uruguay. A win now would give Diego Maradona a five-point cushion, but there are those mental scars for Argentina to deal with. That 6-1 defeat in Bolivia must rank as about the lowest moment in their proud football history, but they're back down where the air is not quite so thin, even if Maradona is unhappy about the state of the pitch. Argentina are unbeaten in 33 home qualifiers. The last team to triumph here was Colombia with a stunning 5-0 in 1993. But that kind of scoreline is surely beyond this current team who've managed to six goals in 12 games. Well, once again, Maradona has got a few eyebrows raised with his tactical selection. There are a few big names left out as well. And the Argentina squad has announced it's about who's not in as much as who is there. So much strength in depth, but they are still struggling to qualify for next year's World Cup in South Africa. If they get there, they'll be instantly among the favourites. The undoubted attacking talent that they've got, but they just need to get the best out of this undoubtedly brilliant 
set of individuals, Terry. They certainly do, and the attack certainly has to dominate Diego Maradona and Argentina because I'm not sure about the shape and the selection of his defensive unit of the team. Only three central defenders. I think Gago and Mascherano are going to probably defend in front of them. There's no defensive players. They're playing in a wide position. It's all, all about attack. It doesn't surprise us. The moment we knew that Maradona was appointed the new national coach, it's been attacked from day one. Of course, after that famous defeat to Bolivia, all from 6-1 defeat, they need to get back on track. And they've got defending to do early on here with just over a minute played. And it's Anduha has to tip it over the bar. I was about to tell you that they've got a rocky goalkeeper in tonight, Mariano Anduha. And the cross here comes from Radamel Falcao Garcia, a player who actually plays in this stadium for River Plate. But it might just have dipped under the bar and over the line. They've got a corner to defend Argentina. And their defending is not their strong point. There's no Zanetti, there's no Maxi Rodriguez, no Lucho Gonzalez who scored in the, the last game, the Bolivia game. There's another one for Anduha to deal with. He got a good punch on that one. And then it was Dimakelis with the header. Should be easily dealt with by Colombia. They've got uh, Cordova back in the squad, by the way. Grizzle defender, but he's not in the starting eleven. It's such a narrow defensive unit from Argentina. Three central defenses, Haiti, Di Michelis and Diaz. But there's no defensive cover on the flanks. So it's going to be about possession football for Argentina. They need to get the ball forward as quickly as possible to that attacking trio. But I think there's going to be gaping holes in the midfield areas, particularly in the wider situations. I think if Colombia are positive, they can really cause a problem defensively for Argentina. This is Marine. Just getting goals. They started the campaign well enough. Colombia actually beat Argentina. This is Veron. That's a good tackle. Excellent recovery work done by Freddy Guadi. Another player with experience of playing in Argentina. And then the free kick is given away by the veteran, Juan Sebastian Veron, who's every touch was booed roundly last time he played for Argentina at home you can see Veron just tracking back after losing the ball and attacking Almero from behind giving away a free kick the Manning will take the free kick it's a bold choice to bring Anduha into the side Played a, a game against Panama with all domestic based players. That was between the last World Cup qualifier and this game. And even then, even though he used two goalkeepers on that occasion, Mariano and Duha didn't come into the team. Free kick given away there by Zuniga on Jonas Gutierrez, who was suspended for the horror show in La Paz. Good game to have missed. I think it's going to be an important player for Argentina tonight. Here's another one, it's Messi. Decided to put the early ball across, and it was the, uh, the other grizzled central defender, Yepes, for Colombia, who made the interception. So an Argentina corner. An early goal would settle some nerves, it was whipped in pretty effectively at the near post. Vargas to clear. We'll see what Colombia have got in their makeup in terms of a counter attack. Marcal Garcia was the player caught. It was good defensive tracking actually by Ainsay. That just overstretched as he played that ball. I think he'll be okay. Jim Michaelis to Cata Diaz, who stayed up with Hetafe by the skin of their teeth on the last day of the Spanish season. Almero with a foul. Exactly, this is Guerra this time floating up on the right wing for Argentina. Good rotation between himself, Tevez, and Messi. It's probably here if I need John for Argentina is going to be right back, right side midfield. 
it's no natural right back, it's no natural midfield player that will play on the right side. Gutierrez will do a shift on the left hand side. But he's been beaten here, that's a good opening and it was just behind the centre forward. It was lovely work by Zuniga and he was trying to pick out Falcao Garcia. You can see the Argentina defenders arguing amongst themselves. Gutierrez does his best here, he should be clear in this situation. But Zuniga just gets away, drives it across the six yard box. You see it's Garcia who just can't get on the end of the, the cross. But a great, again, great positive start from Colombia. The team that can't score goals, Colombia. They're in danger of slipping out of the qualification picture. Although Uruguay's defeat is good news for them, is there more good news to come? Zapata was the player preferred to Cordoba. The youngster with Udinese in Italy. The one team that scored a lot of goals, but I think when you play Argentina tonight, you look at the team sheet, the best form of defence has got to be attack. If you sit back and defend against the likes of Messi, Aguero, Tevez, Veron, Gutierrez, you're asking for problems. But they've really gone at the, the Argentina defence, causing them problems. Well, they score a lot of goals, they've managed to force four good away draws at Bolivia, Brazil, Peru and Ecuador. It's certainly a hard team to beat. The two coaches contrasting history in the game. There is, well, is there only one more famous than Diego Maradona around the world of football? Pele's supporters might say yes. Eduardo Lara is in charge of Colombia. Relatively newly appointed, they sat the previous coach Pinto. There's good excitement around El Monumental, the River Plate Stadium, as the ball was played back to David Ospina, the Colombia goalkeeper. Comes back to Tevez. Gutierrez, of course, who will be playing in the championship next season with Newcastle, and Veron is back in Argentina. To play his club football now. Gutierrez trying to turn inside Pereira, but the Atletico Madrid man put in a good solid tackle. Corner though for Argentina. A yeah, good probing play from Argentina there, and looking to free up Gutierrez down the left. But Pereira, player who's got good pace, makes a well time challenge. Messi's corner for Argentina. Good header away. Yepes is the linchpin at the back they're on to try and be the playmaker with Messi a little bit of freedom he said that Gutierrez missed the game in Bolivia I'm not sure that Messi played he was on the team sheets and I seem to see him pop up once or twice but I'm not sure he kicked the ball it certainly was one of those nights that everything from Bolivia went in shooting from long range using the, the advantage of altitude Crucial that Argentina pick up all three points tonight. The pressure is on them, the pressure is on Diego Maradona. I'm slightly surprised that he's still so radical when he's picking, picking his starting 11, the shape of the team. I think he's just got good enough players to organise him into the, an effective unit. There's enough individual talent in this 11 to turn any team into winners. Well, in many ways, it's a difficult job because of the pressure that goes with it, but in many ways, it's a really appealing one because you get to work with some of the world's very best players. Exactly, I mean, you should get the, the three strikers tonight, you've got Diego Melito on the bench, Maxi Rodriguez. Not to mention the likes of the ones who can't get in, such as Gonzalo Guay. There's top-class talent all round, it's a little bit top-heavy, I think, in terms of, I think, the better players are in attack. Although they're not short of defenders, again, if you're a regular viewer of the, the Spanish football here on Sky Sports, you'll know that there are a, a good swathe of Argentine central defenders around the world. It's just the, the setup that he, cho he chooses to pick. The three central defenders, and even we want to drift out into wide areas to defend. Gago is playing right side of midfield three. He doesn't want to defend on the right, right flank as well. So if Colombia can get out the left-hand side of the Argentina team, it's going to cause some massive problems. Mark 
Vargas on the ball in the centre of the midfield for Colombia. He was sent off in the Copa America when he played against Argentina. Venteria with the touch on towards Alcal Garcia, named after the great Brazilian. Oh, he's Colombia now then. Mascarano, the skipper, is about to be shown a yellow card by the Bolivian referee. Gone down well, but home supports is for me. It's a determined tackle. I think his studs are slightly raised. To be honest, a woeful look from Mascarano. Not too many complaints from him, to be fair. The Argentina players really do represent great and good of. World football, Bayern Munich represented, Real Madrid by a couple of players, Liverpool, of course, Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, and with Carlos Tevez, well, who knows, Manchester United, as the last we know, he said he'll make his final decision after this double header of qualification games. You mentioned, of course, Terry, the pressure on Argentina to get a result here, they've got Ecuador away. And that's another game at high altitude. Given the abject performance that they put in against Bolivia, it puts a little bit more pressure on them to get the result today. Seven thousand. I know it's early. It's, there's still plenty of games to be played in this qualifying competition. But don't want to start falling too far behind. We still get an excellent win tonight. It's two vital games back to back. Sure, Diego Maradona will be looking at his team getting all six points to put them right back in the, in the race for qualification. Which we've seen so often, John, that all these games are, can be so tight. Here's Messi, a real buzz of anticipation when he turned and accelerated as we know he can do so. Gargo then is caught in possession. A little sloppy from the Real Madrid player. As I say, a chance to get themselves a five point cushion from Uruguay. We're in the, the playoff place. Gargo drives it forward. Zapata with the clearance away under some pressure. Eight save forward. It's been a while since he scored a goal for Argentina. De Michaelis, Gutierrez. Veron's corner is toward the back post and there's a foul but a climbing going on. And the Argentina attackers. And now is the referee giving the free kick. I think it's Di Michelis. I think the very first touch was by Di Michelis, wasn't it? After that, it was all Yepes holding the shirt. Very difficult to call up. It's players pushing and shoving each other. Touched on by Renteria. Renteria, by the way, plays for Braga, but he's been interesting. A lot of Premier League clubs, apparently. Wigan fans will be interested to know that Rod Ayega is on the bench tonight. This is Marion for Colombia. He got it on his left and he decided to go for goal. The goalkeeper lost it. When it comes back across, there's an appeal for handball. The referee was very quick to wave that one away. But that was a real heart in the mouth moment for Anduha. That's not the best of back passes. How did he keep that ball in play there, Ospina? Well, if he didn't, the assistant referee wasn't up in line with it. It's the first time we've seen the rookie goalkeeper really tested. Wasn't the cleanest pair of hands you've seen. And he could be tested again as Marion decides to go short, and this time the chance is a real waste. Renteria with a shot straight at Andrew up. You see, it's Marion wins the ball back. Cata Diaz plays the ball into Renteria. And we see the long range effort for Marion again. Just pushed to the side by the rookie goalkeeper and Duha. Again, good attacking play from Colombia. Showing a good positive attitude. Being brave as well. 
decided to leave out Carito, who's been the, the sort of regular goalkeeper for Argentina recently after the hammering by Bolivia. Not that it was down to him, it was, a, it was an abject team performance all round. Maybe could have done a little better, but that was all. But he hasn't been playing regularly for Lazio, so that was the reason for the change, and he's got for another a home base player. We're eight in the squad. This is Zuniga for Colombia. Certainly haven't been overawed, have they, in the opening stage of this game? Carlos Tevez going back towards his own goal. And that was fouled by Vargas. So 16 minutes into the game, John, and all the talking they've been doing regarding chances has been about Colombia. Argentina have had, I can't recollect, a, a decent effort on goal. They haven't got good service into the front three. I think it starts with a shake of the team from the back. We're not able to get any decent spells of possession. Colombia just can't believe their luck that they've come here. They get a lot of possession. And they're not being tested by the Argentina attack at the moment. It's the same formation that they used against Venezuela. And they won that game by four goals to nil. And the write-ups afterwards all had Argentina playing well and winning it comfortably. That wasn't the way that we saw it at half-time. In the end, they got there, a little bit like England, I guess, against Kazakhstan, but it was unconvincing for long periods. And they, with the, the balance of talents, you'd always got to make Argentina favourite. They've got a decision their way there now, and then Guerrero with the ball to Gutierrez. Colombia get the decision, not afraid. We'll give the call in front of a very partisan and hostile crowd in Buenos Aires. We take into account on the, the better start from Colombia. The money's still going to be in Argentina, as you said. Just with the sheer individual brilliance they've got in the team. And the attacking trio can create a chance of win a match out of nothing. But I think you have to get the shape of the team right. Not many teams play now with three, three at the back, particularly three central defenders. He said neither of those three central defenders want to drift out into wide areas. And apart from Gutierrez is defending the left-hand side, on the right-hand side for Argentina, no one's defending that side of the pitch at all. Well, they do have a free kick now that Tevez has finally been fouled. The second time of asking, Freddy Guari. Who got him in the end? See, Tevez has always been industrious. And nice and costly take defenders on. Ospina is another young goalkeeper. He plays with Nice in France. We've got five caps before tonight. Argentina might well be lucky to test him here. Veron on the ball. Brian Sebastian Veron with a defective shot, and it's behind them for an Argentina corner. Again, forward, so is Dimitrios. They're on again to deliver. Same result as last time, a clearance by Colombia. Comes back to the 34 year old who collapsed to the ground suspiciously easily. An important challenge, perhaps, won by Colombia there, but then excellent recovery work. Danger over for Argentina for the time being. In fact, there's a good opportunity here. They're on to Messi. Armero, the left back, puts it out of play. This is the challenge from Rome was appealing for the free kick. He went to ground far too easily. Not player has always been blessed with the greatest of pace. Great touch, great awareness, great at play of one and two touch football. Important Argentina do get them the ball as much as possible. You can try and distribute the ball, give some quality service to the front three. 
In his football career, Veron has been transferred for £88.8 .8 million. Pounds. Certainly been well sought after these days. As I say, he's, he's back home, plays for Estudiantes. This is Dimichelis of Bayern Munich to eight of Real Madrid. Yeah, though, who knows who will be playing for Real Madrid come the start of next season. Good football this though from Argentina. Messi with another change of direction and a crucial touch by the goalkeeper. It looked like it might just open up for Gargo and Mark in the far, the far post. Much, much better from Argentina. Head on again. This time he tries to pick out Sergio Aguero. Such a crucial touch from the young goalkeeper. The spinner. Ron was involved in all aspects of this attack. She finds itself to Lionel Messi in the box. A little bit of magic. Just tries to think it over to keep it to the rules of the far post. Fernando Gargo. Excellent touch from Ospina. This is Marie. Chancy ball just played out by Renteria. Arbero, the left back, is favourite to win this one. Keen Argentina are to keep pressing. Good play by Garcia. And they're able to spread this ball wide to Zuniga. He wins the throw of Gutierrez. Boras <laughs> Gutierrez is getting a little bit frustrated. Tackle and Zuniga. Argentina for me, just up the tempo, just up the pace slightly. Sergio Aguero will be back in the Champions League next season. Dropped on the ground by his athletic on the good teammate, Pereira. The yellow card has been brandished. Colombia can't play. Exactly what he's doing there. There's no need for that tackle. Where was the, the lone man in attack? Plenty of cover back for the Colombia defence. Surprised to see Pereira play his experience in a way of free kick to Argentina. Just that change of pace, from Argentina. They've got to have possession of the ball. Then they don't have to worry about defending. They don't have to worry about the gaping holes in their defence if they've got possession of the ball. Well, two final minds were conspiring there, Veron and Messi. A few more lines around the face of Veron's face and when he first came to our attention. It is to be Veron, made in our pace. Headed away by Garcia, the centre forward. Put behind by Zapata. Side point the Colombia concentrated set pieces because they know that Argentina at some stage are going to carve open their defence. They can't afford to give away cheap goals. It's so important they concentrate and defend these set pieces. Hasn't been effectively cleared yet. Messi will get another go. Dances his way to a dangerous area again. They left the ball floating up there to be attacked, and Michaelis just couldn't get on the end of it. So Messi again just works the angle. Cute little chip to the far post. In the case, I think just had his run blocked off slightly. Good defending eventually for me, Chris. It's better from Argentina now. We get the likes of Lionel Messi into the game, Carlos Tevez, and I think a lot of that's down to Sebastian Veron. Harry could win this race, has managed to keep it in. As Cross goes into a dangerous area as well. 
had to travel a long way before Ince came to clear. You see the problem, Katy Diaz is defending the right back position. Calling for Marin. Colombia can really attack down that left flank, get bodies into the box. Sure, they're going to be outplayed by Argentina. Another cross into the Argentina penalty area. There's been a supply from Colombia. Barrera to Guari. Intercepted by Perón. And then Tevez was dispossessed. goes down and he gets the free kick that he was definitely looking for at the, the challenge by Zuniga. Just a place of shoulder to shoulder there. Good pressing play from Vargas. Zuniga trying to win the ball back as quickly as possible. I think they can have more faith in attacking down the left flank. Commit more players into the box on those crosses. As I said, sure they're going to be outplayed by Argentina. They are going to cause and create one or two chances and might just be able to nick a goal or two. Single-handedly dragging them through, but certainly putting together the best phase of games from any individual I ever saw play football, Terry. Yeah, and if we're talking about Argentina qualification for the next World Cup, it just would be unthinkable to think of any World Cup finals without Argentina there. I'm sure, they're going to qualify. They're making hard work of it. In terms of Maradona, and his music is prime. Just a sensational football. Top four qualify of the ten, and then the the fifth place team plays off against a team from Central or North America. At the moment, slightly worryingly for the South Americans, it's Mexico sitting, sitting in that position. They should be able to get themselves into the top three and overhaul the likes of Honduras. Can't take that fifth place for granted. This is much better than a high foot raise in the very edge of the penalty area against Messi. Against Yepes. Very promising shooting position here for the home team, Argentina. And just trying to tackle there from Yepes. My challenger, Lionel Messi. Correctly awarding the free kick to Argentina. Short one, Sebastian Verón is going to be in around this set pace. Messi with his left foot. Got to work the young goalkeeper. Got to hit the target. Strike the ball with decent pace. Again, it's a conference between Messi and Verón. Messi standing on the wrong side with them. They can produce moments of genius. He's not going to take his free kick with his right foot and scurry into the top corner. So I guess he's going to be the player setting the ball up. Or at least a decoy. Well, Colombia pulled everybody back. But it was Cata Diaz of all the talented players on the pitch for Argentina. The man blessed with the, the least natural ability was the man who hit the shot. He can drive the ball though, John. But I don't think this, the, the execution of Luke's set up between Messi and Barone was spot on. Just had to shuffle his run up, hit the ball ended up in between his feet rather than laid on a plate and to hit right footed. Wasted opportunity there for Argentina. And Terrier to Marine for Colombia. It's Vladimir Marine who is the player of the foul. It's a club 
teammates. One or two of the Argentina squad players plays for Independiente. Duhar comes, comfortable play. He was a big man, six foot four. Had one brief spell in Europe when he had a loan spell with Malema. Aguero from Tevez, and he finds his teammate again. He's got the strength and the ability to hold on to the ball. He went down, and the referee doesn't see a foul there. Well, it's a great decision. I'm not sure it's a right decision either. We'll get a chance to have a look in a moment. Argentina is still playing on, except Sergio Aguero. Well, I've got to say, Terry, well, it's be great if you call it without the replay. I thought it was a penalty. Well, I thought there was a couple of foolish and reckless tackles there. See Vargas. It's oh, right on the edge of the box. Zappa there with a foolish tackle. I think he's done enough there for Aguero's attack 18 yard box. These are reckless tackles we're making in, around, in and around your own 18 yard box. I think the referee's got that one wrong. It wasn't the most solid of contact, it just seemed to be on his knee, which is enough to cause the pain that you can see. Is it? And also just to, to knock his leg back as he's trying to go on and do the honest thing as, as well, Sergio Aguero. It's poor defending from, from first of all from Vargas, then Zapata. They're making reckless tackles, they're diving in, they're going into ground. You just run the risk of giving away a free kick or a penalty. I think with a change of direction from Aguero, MC Zapata just extends his leg out. I think he does catch Aguero. Another corner here for Argentina. Corner was taken, defended well, and defended those set pieces well so far. As, as you said, they had to, Terry. Order to Argentina. As the half has progressed, certainly Argentina started playing better at a quicker tempo. It's going to be a finding it hard now to hold on and keep a clean sheet. It's good incisive play from the Argentina attackers. in their way, Armando taking too many steps on the pitch, not sure he took that many really, it's a nice one for the referee to give though and get the 60,000 angry fans off your back for a moment. The long attack again, they've certainly had the bravery to take the game to Argentina when they felt that they've had the chance, Armando to marry, to Armando again. The River Plate player in the River Plate Stadium. Good defensive work there from Dolo. Make sure he didn't commit himself too early into the tackle. Just time to ride it. a huge night in the South American World Cup qualifiers. We've still got Paraguay Chile to come. 11.50, Sky Sports 1. So that's as soon as we finish here, we'll be going to that one. And there is another game tomorrow night as well, Peru versus Ecuador. That's at 9.30 p.m. Sky Sports 1. Peru at the bottom of the group, but Ecuador still very much involved. Of course, the side has reached the last couple of World Cups. It's done pretty well. And Argentina's opponents on Wednesday night. Really entering the business end of the qualification now, made a final third of matches. Paraguay and Brazil leading it at the top of the group. Lots of Argentina, Chile, Uruguay. Trying to fight their way into those final two qualification places. At least the automatic ones. Probably a 
of football to be played in this competition. Well, the game is on a knife edge in Argentina's qualification situation. This in a similar position, as I say, Quito at high altitude is Wednesday's game. They've got Brazil to face as well in September. That's a home game. And of course, they, they win these two games now and they'll be able to relax a little bit with the two in September and two in October. And that's when it's all over. But Colombia attacking and who has to make the save from Garcia? They were cut wide open that time, Argentina. That's a quick attack there with Zamero. Plays the ball into Garcia, it's him, points into his feet, that's where he wants the ball. Tees himself up, decent effort on goal. Eventually a comfortable save for Andujar. Again, Colombia proving to be a threat. This is Armero, look at the space that he was allowed. Didn't produce a good cross to match the initial movement from Colombia. Important challenge to be made, and it was made by Vargas. He's entitled to make that one. And it's a little bit of a phantom note square up between Vargas and Aguero. He followed through there, Vargas, to do exactly what he was doing. Made sure he got the ball first, but followed through afterwards. Couldn't Aguero won't hold back when it comes to the physical aspects of the game. I'm pretty sure the defender knew exactly what he was doing there. He doesn't tower over many, Fabian Vargas. But Aguero is a little guy, not easy to knock over. Rather like his father-in-law to be. Diego Maradona, by the way, if you're not familiar with the, the soap opera of Argentina football. And Maradona is the grandfather of Aguero's little boy, Benjamin. Born in Madrid, but I'm sure he'll play for Argentina if he's good enough. Expectation, expectation levels are going to be somewhat ridiculous, aren't they? But Might not even like football. Exactly. That's it. It's very Guari. This time they just go long, Colombia, but too long. But it's a game that hasn't had any real pattern, I think. Because of the shape of the Argentina team, it doesn't lend itself to having any sort of style of play. It relies heavily on individual players. Four Argentina players within a few yards of each other in the centre of the field there. change being made here, but to throw on a, a big centre forward in the shape of Melito. It's quite close to half time, isn't it, John? I'm guessing it must be. Purpose must be someone must be carrying a knock, carrying an injury. Well, I know Maradona is committed to attack. He thinks they need another attacking player on the pitch. Still in the first half of the game. I'd be very surprised, but we saw Aguero get knocked. Carlos Tevez has been quiet towards the latter stages of the first half. Might be taking off a centre back. <laughs> Time to chase the game. Diego Milito might, might go on and play in a right back position. Oh, but here's Messi. Everything could change now. It's Lionel Messi. And he got it wrong. Played it with the outside of his left boot, as we've seen him do many, many times before. Usually gets it pretty accurately, though. This is Aguero. Looks OK to me. Now Fernando Gargo. Didn't get many goals. And that's why. Found himself in an unfamiliar attacking position there. And there'll be a, a defensive midfield player. Here we see Messi realises that he's wasted a golden opportunity. Too much pace on the, the drag back. Couldn't find an attacking player. It was Vargas in midfield, got too com complacent. Ron wins the ball, Guerrero feeds it out wide. Gargo just didn't set himself up properly to get in the shot. And Tesla Spina in the Colombian goal. You're right, it is Sergio Aguero who is going off. 
and is replaced by Diego Milito. Not a bad change to be able to make there. Milito has just signed for Inter. Had a terrific season with Genoa, playing in Serie A in Italy. With 24 goals, he was the second top scorer. Of course, we're familiar with him from Spain as well, where he was always a, a free-scoring player. And in a way, tactically, Terry, with the, the three up front, Marin is getting himself a yellow card here, needs to calm down. They want to take it quickly. And they charged it down as they were taking the free kick quickly, and that could be another yellow card here. He's getting feisty. Yeah, Murray was stupid enough to get involved with Lionel Messi. Picked himself up a yellow card. Marine feels that Messi just left his foot in. You see him raise the arm, Lionel Messi. Just signs of frustration. Drifting into the Argentinian number 10, Marine can find himself quite unfortunate to pick up the yellow card. Well, Messi is one of the players who would miss the next game if he was to be booked. Veron with the free kick, and it was usually touched on by De Michaelis, but cleared by Colombia. I think Messi might have been a little lucky there to have not picked up the yellow card as Marin did. Still away to Ecuador at the end of a long season in which you've won three trophies. Might not be the worst game to miss. Start your summer holiday a few weeks, a few days early. This is Vladimir Marin. Now Renteria for Colombia. Ignored the left back and he finds Freddy Guardian instead. Really good play by Mascarano, the skipper for Argentina. Now Messi. And Luis Perez knows all about Messi. Defended that well. Then had his pocket picked again though by the pocket dynamo for Argentina and Barcelona. He's in pole position to be the world player of the year. You fancy Messi with the brilliant treble for Barcelona. And the Olympics for Argentina at the start of the season as well. It's been a, a long season, but a fruitful season for the young 21-year-old. He's played in every one of the World Cup qualifiers so far. The deal is that he doesn't play in any of the friendlies. They don't call him up for the friendlies. Seems to make a lot of sense. Doesn't really need to earn his place. Marin to Garcia. Argentina quickly close him down and give the free kick away. Do you know what, though, John? That's, the, that's a deal done with Barcelona, not Lionel Messi. This is the type of player that just wants to play in every game. And I think Barcelona and the Argentinian FA, after him starting the season in the Olympics, between them, I think they realised it was in his best interest to miss the friendlies this year. Well, there's no wall here. Similar range from which Marin hit the shot that caused problems early on for Anduha. The defenders are forward. Be a nice time to steal a lead. Marin in, it's comfortably away. Belito, so he did get his first touch actually. He did, it was on Vargas. I think Aguero picked up a couple of knocks, didn't he? The one with Vargas just before he came off. Also when somebody went down when he thought his team should have had a penalty. Zapata. The point I was about to make when the little spat started is that he's a more natural centre forward than Sergio Aguero. He's a big, obvious target man with three up front. It might make a little bit more sense. Exactly. If they can get the service in from the wide, Gutierrez on the left, Messi on the right. Tevez slightly closer to Diego Melito, feed off the scraps. He's a target man, good, good player to hold the ball up. Oh, it's a good run by Armero, and again it went into the penalty area, tantalising enough. Art. But Colombia are saying it was a penalty. The Bolivian referee again waved it away. That it would have been a very controversial decision to give that one, having turned down the Sergio Aguero one. I think it's wishful thinking from the Colombian players, but again, I've said before, Eduardo Lara, the coach of Colombia, can find a pacey left, a white left player. No one wants to play right back for Argentina. 
you see it's Almero, the left back pushing forward. Gutierrez. I mean, this is a case there for Zuniga. Made a great run into the box. Gutierrez is all, all over the back of him. Just such a wishful thinking after not giving the penalty for the offence against uh, Cunaguero. Highly unlikely referee was going to give that one to Colombia. There's Melito with a touch out to Tevez. And now Veron. And Tevez again. Veron in the kind of position from which he has been able to pull the strings, but probably not as much as Maradona had in mind. It's really good, typical work from Tevez. Closing down the ball. Hard working and honest. Now Gutierrez is away from a couple of challenges. Can he deliver here? Gutierrez, not a bad ball in. Excellent defensive work by Zapata. Well, for Gutierrez down the left flank. Good determined defending from Zapata. Can't see Di Michele, so venture upfield, Cata Diaz. Can they get a goal just before half time? Half clear. It's a straight race that Messi will get there first. Played by Garcia and by Marin. Haven't been scared of Messi in this game. Oh, that's a poor ball. It was a real opportunity. Now oh, Yepes. Surely he'll stop when he gets over halfway. And he's gone uncharted territory from an open play situation. Now Freddy Guani has been brought down. Maybe it's Colombia who will have the last chance at the half. Mascarano gets away without the. Uh, Yellow card, good job actually, because he picked one up earlier. The referee probably remembering that. I think he just tried to put out the last second there, but I mean, some could consider that another yellow card offence. Would have been harsh. But it's a little closer in than the last one. And it will just about suit the, the left foot of Vladimir Marin, the Independiente player. And based in Argentina, looking to give Argentina a major World Cup headache. It's Marin with the free kick, and that was way off target. That's a waste, it was not only way off target, it lacked any, any pace as well. See Marion from distance. Doesn't test Andujar at all in the Argentina goal. It's been an end to end first half. This, this, uh, this game certainly could go either way. It's been a right old battle for Argentina, it must be said. You know that you're going to get a tough game with Colombia. That's the way it's worked out in the first half. In Buenos Aires, then at half time, Argentina nil, Colombia nil. No, I just think that players, they don't look absolutely, you know, sure in their minds what's expected of them as individuals to conform to what's needed in the, in the team ethic. You know, I see, you know, Messi when he's playing with Barcelona, him and Dani Alves, they've got a wonderful, you know, relationship. And I'm looking at, Bar uh, looking at Argentina tonight and thinking, well, you know, who is he going to dovetail with? Who is he going to combine with on that right-hand side? There's a definite unbalance to the, you know, they're not balanced at all, are they? Are, are... Yeah, that's right. I, I, I agree with that. Uh, Sanetti is coming, we are seeing that right now. I think that's a good move, bringing Sanetti on. I think it's a very good move, yes. It's going to be much more solid, Argentina. And because they are more solid, after you are solid, you, you, you can start to attack much, much, with, much, much better, yeah. So, Sanetti uh, coming on. What about Colombia? You, you said lowest scorers, they haven't won away in a World Cup qualifier. Uh, they've only picked up one win in eight now. They were third uh, after uh, six games in this qualification, but really got off the boil, Colombia. Can they find some form here? Well, I think they have found form. Whether they can reproduce that again in the second half, I think they've been really determined. They realise that they're coming to a place against a team lacking in confidence, and they've played on the nerves of the uh, not just the players, but the supporters. You know, the supporters are anxious. Yeah. You know, we're sat here, you know, uh, analysing what's happening, but over there, I can imagine the pressure that's on these players. What if they don't get a win tonight, Aussie, and then they've got to go to altitude again midweek to play Ecuador? 
Mm. Oh, goodness me. What, what, what goes on in Argentina mm. if that happens? Well, uh, anything can happen. Uh, Maradona's in charge. Anything can happen when he's in charge. So uh, it's all very much in the air right now. These 45 minutes are absolutely crucial. In fact, for Argentina's chance of qualifying, we have a, in three or four days' time in Ecuador another game in altitude, a very, very difficult game. So it may be happen, I would say, even to Maradona himself. It doesn't always translate, does it, that a wonderful player makes a wonderful manager, uh, Trevor? Do you have the fear that this could all backfire for Maradona and Argentina? I do, because you know when you look at um, you know managers in the past who have uh, taken over the national team, they've always had you know some previous experience. But to go in like Maradona has done now, I know he's got Bellardo alongside him who can guide him along. But um, I think it's a huge ask of putting somebody in like Maradona to manage the national team and uh, I think it's going to end in tears. Whether you'll see this, uh, this campaign out, I'm not so sure. But uh, at the moment, you know, if they don't get this win today, I could see him coming under enormous pressure even before Wednesday's game. We see flags around there saying Maradona, Yonce Mas, Maradona a little <laughs> more. Uh, other banners professing Maradona. What would it take? For the fans to, to, to get on his back, was he? Well, surprisingly, in Argentina, and even the football establishment is not 100% be behind Maradona. Uh, all of these people are very, very fanatical of him. As you know, he has a very a big, big following in Argentina. After saying that it's not universal, and certainly in the, in the football establishment, it's not universal at all. I think what Colombia have to do in the second half is make sure they keep their discipline. Because there are one or two occasions in the first half when it started to boil over a little and I think that uh, the team that can keep 11 players on the field for the whole 90 minutes uh, will, will win this game. 21 minutes we're up to for the half-time interval. Argentina have been out there on the pitch waiting for the second half uh, for five minutes. I wonder what effect that will have on the second 45, if any. Uh, substitution there, you just saw uh, Zanetti coming on. Uh, let's get more on that and the commentary for the second half from Terry Gibson and John Driscoll. Well, welcome back. Remember, there was great controversy when FIFA raised the idea of a 20-minute half-time. It's coming by default in the South American World Cup qualifiers. There isn't one that's been anywhere near 15 minutes that I've seen. What we are about to see, I guess, Terry, is Argentina move to a more straightforward back four with Zanetti at right back and Ainsley moving to left back. No great surprise, perhaps the only surprise is that Maradona has backed down after 45 minutes. Yeah, I think it was imperative he made the change. I think as the lads said at half time, there's a lack of balance in the team defensively, and also they can't seem to start any attacks off from the back. I think he's gone to an orthodox back four now. Zanetti, Diaz, Di Michaelis, and Hainsey at left back. I think it should give them a platform to at least start some attacking moves from deep in their own half, play a possession game therefore get better quality service into the, the attacking players. Confirmation of the substitution, Gargo, unsurprisingly the man taken off, playing in a slightly unfamiliar right-sided midfield role and he didn't really make much impact on the game. He seems lost positionally, I think he's an excellent defensive midfield player. Sitting in front of any back four, I think he does a really good job. Good young player as well, but and on the right of the three with, with no real right back alongside him. He's having to defend the right flank and almost the lone Messi. Obviously, it's going to start the pitch attacking. Freddy Guani is on the ball. Remember, Argentina were forced into making a first half change when Aguero limped off to be replaced by Diego Melito. Colombia have been dogged and determined in the game so far, but there's still 45 minutes for them to play, and Melito has played it back to Tevez, has a touch and has a look, and it's Amero with the initial challenge, and then they get lucky with the second clearance, Colombia. We see Melito involved, there's going to be a figurehead. True centre-forward in the old-fashioned style. Tevez and Messi just going to play off of him. With plenty of movement from those two. Work the ball into the six-yard box there. Good defending from Colombia. Remember, despite what happened in Bolivia with Argentina being hammered, they start as overwhelming favourites for this game. 
They haven't lost a World Cup qualifier in 33. The last one was back in 1993, and Colombia haven't won an away game in this qualifying campaign. They've only scored one goal. They've only got one away win in their last 13. So everything was stacked in Argentina's favour, but it has been very hard work so far. And as Trevor and Ozzy were saying at half-time, Mascarano can consider himself lucky to still be on. As Veron with a good challenge, he wins the ball back effectively, but and Tevez can't take it on. And Argentina at the throw. Will we see more of Messi in the second half? It will be something to warm the Argentine hearts. Melito. Only 12 months that he got relegated from the top division in Spain. Melito has had a very, very good time in Italy. We'll be playing in the Champions League with Inter next season. Colombia have a free kick. Foul on Camilo Zaniga. Zacate Diaz getting drawn out, essential defensive role there. Slightly drawn up the field. Make sure he followed the centre forward Venturia. It's a deep line midfield position. Mascarano puts a little bit of pressure on Jonas Gutierrez. The Newcastle man was facing his own goal. Did well actually get himself out of a tight spot. Freddy Guari. Decided to have a crack from there, that was optimistic, to say the least, for a man who's never scored an international goal. Huge expectations on Zanetti. Very few players with more experience than him. Broken the way of Tevez. Perea very closely with him, and then that's good defending as well. Zaniga in in support. There, just nicking the ball away from Gutierrez. And again, bodies back in numbers. Great effort, determination to, to press the ball and not give the Argentine attackers any time in possession. I think the back four for Argentina looks slightly more balanced now. I'm not sure about the midfield. Mascarano's playing deep line in central midfield, just protecting the back four. They're assuming just in front of Di Michaelis, Catadia. Gutierrez playing on the left, Veron playing wherever he likes. It's a huge space in midfield. Gutierrez tries to release Melito, but it's offside there against big Diego Melito. Unlucky actually, I don't think he was. Yeah, I think Camara, the left back, was at least level with him. I think they got the benefit of the doubt, the assistant referee. He's only got four international goals, Diego Melito. But he's only playing his 18th game tonight, and a few of those have been as a substitute as well. There's no doubt that the talent that Argentina have, and also strength in depth as well, something they really do share with Brazil. There are some good teams around, and you sort of scratch the surface and say you're pretty quickly into inferior players, but Argentina are blessed. They're on to Zanetti. Big expectations on the man winning cap number 132 tonight, the 35 year old. All those years at the top, but everyone can make a mistake. A bit harsh with the blue, I think. Now a little change of space from Messi, and Yepes comes and knocks him down to the ground. Cynical foul by Mario Yepes. See Messi doing what he does best. Ball is glued to his feet. It's not like Yepes can stop him unless he's going to foul him. That's what we need to see more from Argentina. So one time the attack really does come to life. Messi creates a real spark. 
one or two chances from distance from this range. She yet they haven't really tested Ospina. They need to do so now. Doesn't get to take too many free kicks for Barcelona, but we know he can really strike a ball. Lionel Messi. Once again, Colombia pull everybody back. They've been a team that have been hard to score against. But this is Messi! Oh, and that's desperately unfortunate. It was a delightful free kick from Messi. Firmly against the crossbar and back out. They said in the first half, didn't we, that they had to test the goalkeeper in this situation. It's right off the face of the crossbar, Lionel Messi. Spina had no chance, a great pace and technique on the delivery. Frustrations there for Diego Maradona. Gutierrez on hand for the rebound, just couldn't get back on target. Just something needed to spark off the Argentina attack. Especially, first of all, running with the ball, getting brought down by Epes. Of course, then Messi stepped up to the plate with an outstanding set piece, so unlucky. It's a wonderful set-piece from a truly gifted player. Fully deserved the goal from that, that effort. This is Gutierrez. Stopped by Perret. And Veron plays it blind and it's cleared away. Good defending again by Zapata. Had a pretty good game for Colombia. Ainsay with a touch, moved into left back. Good versatile player, Ainsay. A lovely play by Gutierrez. What about the delivery? Can't get away from Perret. He's got the pace to make the recovery, the Atletico Madrid. Player. Now Tevez uses that on as a decoy. A little nutmeg there by Carlos Tevez. Good play again by Zapata. That's brilliant from Tevez. Showing great tenacity, good strength, and fantastic skill there as well. Nutmeg Pereira. Argentina really stepping up now. Veron whips that one in, and it's Sofia Perez, and it's in! And won't you believe it's Cata Diaz? A team full of attacking superstars have finally got a goal to their big, ugly central defender, but what a finish! But it had to come from a set piece. I said that Colombia had to concentrate. But for me, the second half performance from Argentina has been much improved. They've stepped up the tempo. It's Tevez that earned this set piece. Veron takes it. Did it into the box. Just a flick on. Slight touch, I think, from Thema Kalis. And a good controlled finish from Cata Diaz at the far post. Beats our speed up. All ends up. But a much improved performance from Argentina in the second half. More of a duck set up for the team. A back four. Got the ball to Messi. They got the ball to Tevez. And I think they deserve the one goal lead now. It's his first ever international goal, scored by the Hatafe player. And it changes the mood in the River Plate Stadium. Came from a set piece. It was the warning that you gave to Columbia Terry in the first half was to stay focused on those set pieces. It's just a cheap way to give away a goal when you're playing a world class team like Argentina, full of world class players. Last thing you want to do is give away a goal from a set piece. It's a well worked routine, good delivery from Veron. Flick on from Dima Kalis. Who would have thought it had been catted the ears at the far post with a controlled volley right into the roof of the net. And by the way, if the Diaz family are watching, I'm sorry I said he was ugly, but there are more handsome players around. It's all about what's inside, though. Great finish by Cata Diaz. Beautiful footballers, haven't they, Argentina? 
come down to the big centre half. Get his team into the one goal lead. Well, they might have a little bit more defending to do, but well, the changes that Maradona was prepared to make at half time, criticised by everybody watching. But he saw a problem and he changed. Looking for a solution, and Argentina have got a lead. The qualification situation could be looking a whole lot rosier by the end of the evening. So the pick on the other is Demi Cash has got up on oh, Yepes. Actually got the little touch there. We see it. Great finish from Cata Diaz. A lifeline for Argentina. Like their players, their supporters, of course, to Diego Maradona. Vladimir Mari, how will Colombia respond? They're not a team that gets goals. Only six in their qualifiers, only one on the road. Warren has never scored. This will be a good moment to start. Tried to do one thing too many, and it was the goal scorer who dispossessed him, Cata Diaz. One way or another, Verón has won a throw for Argentina. I think Verón's enjoying himself, particularly in the second half. He's playing alongside Mascherano. So two of them playing the central midfield role. Messi on the right flank, Gutierrez on the left. Tevez pretty much pushing up alongside Diego Benito. So from the totally unorthodox Diego Maradona-like setup that we started with, so much the 4-4-2 setup now, and it's serving his team much better. They're playing with more purpose. They seem to have better understanding of each other's play. The team looks certainly more balanced. In many ways, football is a very, very simple game, and sometimes we all look to overcomplicate it. Maybe that's what Maradona was doing in the first half. Can be guilty at times as well of trying to change the shape of the team. Renteria handled the ball there as he charged it down. Marin had the shot, wouldn't have counted. As I was saying, John, sometimes you're guilty of changing the shape of the team just to get certain players into the starting 11. It isn't always necessarily the case. Pick the best balanced team. Give yourself a platform to work from. But Maradona is still a rookie coach, one of the biggest jobs in world football. Sure, he'll learn. He's going to have to learn very, very quickly. Because he just had a couple of friendlies before the last two World Cup qualifiers. Other than that, a couple of very, very brief and unsuccessful attempts at coaching for Maradona. His legend that carries him through, that makes him so eternally popular. What he achieved as a player will buy him time. If uh, Alfio Basile had had results like Maradona had in Bolivia, he'd have lost his job, there's no doubt about that. He lost his job anyway when they did stumble in the qualification campaign, having started pretty well. They won all their games until they faced Colombia in Bogota. That's where it started to go wrong, which... Tevez was sent off early on in that game. Did them a big disservice. Now Falcao Garcia. Not a lot of support, but it's a good run by the River Plate player, and he carries on. It's more than a good run, it was excellent play, and eventually Di Michaelis fouled him. Garcia with great run down the right flank, eventually it was Di Macadis. He also took Gabriel Heinze to the cleaners first. Obviously, he made in the tackle from Heinze. Di Macadis was certainly not going to get to the bar line. Good situation here, the left footed Marin. Really bend this in towards Anduha. He's got to put pace on this, almost have a shot, get bodies across the goalkeeper and see what happens. Colombia conceded from a free kick, looking to equalise from another set piece. The waste from Marin to make amends. He's got the ball back again. 
but he does good work by Tevez. Mascarano again to Tevez. Two former West Ham teammates link up. Alito is not foul. Referees have got the ball. The Argentina number nine is down on the ground. Well, Colombia play on. And then Baron gave a free kick away. The referee has got to calm a few people down. I think the referee waved that one play on Marine. Didn't make the tackle, Lionel Messi. Great skills from the Argentinian. But I wonder why he just stopped play there. I think he thought the referee had awarded the free kick. Then it's Baron. I think for the third or fourth fence, the referee decided to break up the game. And Terrier has got the better of Cato Diaz there, and he's got plenty of pace! And Falcao Garcia knows that it was a glorious chance. He wasted. got away in the middle. Absolute waste. It's a great run from Renteria. Great cross with his left foot, right across the six-yard box. He just needs a definite touch from Gar Falcao Garcia. You see his frustration when he whacks his hands into the grass. That was the best opportunity in a game for Colombia, and they probably won't get a better one. Only got three goals at 16 internationals. He's had a good season actually for River Plate. They won the Clausura at the end of 2008. This is Garcia on the ball again, and then the, the overlapping support and from the, the right side of midfield players, Zuniga. Tevez showing his strength and being fouled by Camilo Zuniga. It's been a good response, I think, from Colombia. The guy in the goal down, I think they've come back into the game. Awful way for him to give away the goal from the set piece. Back again on the front foot, looking to attack every opportunity. It's important Argentina do concentrate at the back. We know they'd love to go forward and get a second, maybe a third goal. It's so crucial that Diego Maradona does have some defensive input into his team now. Keep the clean sheet. And the three points are theirs. And a vital victory. It's going to be interesting to see how Maradona approaches the last 25 minutes of the game. Will he make any concessions? Will he make any tactical changes? Or will he still just go for the second goal? Well, Colombia are about to respond by throwing on a forward in Adrian Ramos. So Wigan fans remain frustrated, I'm afraid to say. Rolle Jäger stays on the bench for now. Foul throw by Zanetti. The game has changed since he's come on, but he's made a couple of elementary mistakes for one of the world's most experienced footballers. So it's a forward player for a midfield player, Marin off, and Rami's on. Messi quickly closed down by a host of yellow shirts. Yet Messi came away with the ball in the end. It wasn't his foul. That was pretty quick. Pretty Guardi in there. Gave the free kick away. Maybe the ref saw it as a sandwich. By the way, as far as we're aware, Yepes wasn't booked for the earlier challenge that led to the free kick, in which Messi hit the bar. I find hard to believe, but we're looking. None of us saw a yellow card, and we've checked. Or will Messi have another go? Or is it Veron? Should have been Messi. Veron straight into Renteria. Still Argentina possession though. Midway through the second half of this game. Marion was on a yellow card, by the way. So. 
it's not the biggest surprise to see that he's been replaced. He wasted one or two really good opportunities in the first half. Oh, that's good play by Mascherano. Mascherano brings an excellent stop from the goalkeeper. And he's in a bit of pain here, the Argentina skipper. It's the interception from the central midfield player. Seizes the opportunity to break forward. It's a great effort, hits the target, forces Ospina to make the save. Pitts to pick up a bit of crank for his efforts. Again, he's not blessed with a great goal scoring record. He's got a couple for Argentina, he's only scored one since he's been in England. This is his last game of the season, by the way, the yellow card he picked up. The Ecuador game. Certainly a player that does cover a lot of ground. Technically very good. Possibly one of the world's best at playing that role. Just in front of the back four. Occasion saw fit to push forward. Don't need him back on the pitch for the remainder of this match to keep things nice and solid. They used two subs already. Yepes with the header away. Good position this for Colombia. They can get the, the final pass right on one of these counter attacks. That's where it's generally falling down for them, but they get a free kick here against Zanetti. The referee hasn't given much to Argentina. Zanetti there with a lack of pace. Ramos the substitute, showing him a clean pair of heels. Zanetti showing his experience. Colombia don't threaten too much from open play. What can they do for their free kick? Put that onto the head of Veron, who cleared, and Melito should be able to get it away, but Guarin to keep it moving again. Good play by Freddy Guarin, decides to pass this time. And that's come back Colombia's way, and it was a good opportunity. Zuniga slicing it, but it was perhaps the best chance they've had in this second half. Eventually forced to Zuniga, just can't hit the target. Just set an excellent response for Colombia. Just strikes across the outside of that ball, slices it away from goal. This is going to be a nervy final 20 minutes with Diego Maradona and his men. A second goal would make the whole stadium a much happier place to be. We've had a couple of half chances, haven't they? That one from Zuniga and the one that. Garcia couldn't reach. Seeing these two players, they're going head to head at every opportunity. Milito trying to back in it, Pris, making sure he doesn't give up any ground. Then on to Messi. Oh, lovely play by Messi, but Colombia were on to him. There was support there. And Mascherano. Referee brings it back for the foul. It's Almero with a clear lunge in at Lionel Messi. Just flicked it to the side of Almero as he made the challenge. I'm not sure how much intent was there from Pablo Almero. Certainly not the first defender this year to. To be shown a clean pair of heels from Lionel Messi. Diego Melito. Run back well by Guari. And Fakal Garcia. Colombia lucky to keep possession with Vargas. Renterio who's slipping and sliding all over the place as he tries to play. Now Zuniga clips it in again towards Radamel Falcao Garcia, but 
Once again, the Argentina based player couldn't take it under control. Colombia failed to qualify for the last two World Cups. They finished sixth in the qualifying table on both occasions. And their chances would be a lot more remote if they don't get a good result here tonight. Probably the last game that they can sort of write off. Only three points behind Colombia, although Ecuador have that game against Peru that we'll put for you tomorrow night. Well, here is the, the change that we were half expecting to be made. Garcia, who goes off and is replaced by a Premier League player, finished the season pretty well. Hugo Gurayega got three goals in his last four games for Wigan. Steve Bruce was talking about big things coming from him next season. I'm sure that our very good friend Roberto can get the very best out of him as well. Best of luck. the coming season. At the moment, he's got 17 minutes to make an impact on Argentina. And this is a unusual way to start, getting himself involved in a bit of silliness with Di Michaelis. Well, he had every right to go for this challenge. It shows a little bit of afters here from Di Michaelis. Got the Jager, but he's a direct player, full of aggression. Good pace as well. He's up for it, shiny, he's intent. 17 minutes or so to go. He's up for the fight, one goal behind. He still believes his team can get something out of this match. Very much up for the fight, literally. Been involved in two challenges so far. This time it's Mascarano, he knocked over. I'm surprised he didn't start the match. I mean, he's, he's seven goals for his country. Good form for Wigan at the end of the season. Garcia, Falcao Garcia, a little bit wishy-washy in attack. But Diego showed his intentions. First minute he's been on the pitch. Just to try and liven things up in attack. A team that don't score a lot of goals. They rely heavily on him in the remainder of this match. They're not messy now on the ball. And the purr is clearly audible all the way around the stadium. But Lumbry have dealt with him pretty well. Zuniga, held up by Gutierrez, Venterio, the little nutmeg on Mascarano. It's a wild challenge by Veron. Gutierrez clears. Not out of this Colombia by any stretch. Tevez waited for the challenges to come. Melito went over the outstretch stretch legs of Fabian Vargas. I think for sure that Argentina definitely need the second goal. Maradona might look to try and stiffen up the central midfield area. Saw Mascarano suffering from cramp earlier on. A lot of his game is about getting about the pitch, covering the yardage. Ron is not an out and out defensive midfield player. Just a bit, 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 bit of space opening up now in the central midfield area. Colombia looking to break on the counter attack. They're just picking up that loose ball in that area there where Argentina nearly beat. really needs someone there to protect the back four. Be sure that his counter attacks don't come to anything. But do Colombia have the cutting edge to take advantage of this possession that they're having at the moment? Started the campaign with three consecutive clean sheets, but the goals just haven't come. A couple from there, some time right back. Bustos got them crucial points. None of the forwards have scored regularly. Rodriguez seven goals, includes six that have come in friendlies. Guardian is fouling Mascarano, who will be. Relieved to have heard the whistle. So Colombia with Guarín trying to put pressure on the ball as far up the pitch as possible. As the game progresses nearer to its completion, 
Argentina only holding a slender one goal lead. Nerves going to be jangling from the home team and their fans. As Raleigh goes to the edge of the penalty area. And he got away from Di Michaelis, but he couldn't control the ball, having dragged it back. to the challenge there. No reaction from Veron. Certainly just jump into the ball here. We saw Mascherano get booked in the first half for a similar tackle. Very fortunate there not to get the yellow card. Certainly wouldn't want to be ended on the end of that challenge. But great determination from the central midfield player. Just what your team need. Hanging on to a slender one goal lead. Has that coach got defensive bone in his body to try and close out this game? And the referee has got a lot of work to do here. It's another yellow card about to be shown. Ainse was the player who was caught, it was very late. Step. Well, they're all up, asking the referee to take more action on uh, Vargas. Let's see it again, shall we? Much of nothing there, I think, from that challenge. Both players going full speed for the ball. This referee did actually go to the World Cup in 2002 sure that it'll have had full marks from the assessors. <laughs> see. It's getting untidy, isn't it, Johnny, in the central midfield area? Argentina, a team full of attacking players with the one-goal lead. Just need to make sure they keep it nice and tight, protect the back four. Good play by Tevez, he's won the ball back again for Argentina. He's played with typical determination tonight, Carlos Tevez. Diego Molito's arguing the point about the offside now. One more card to play from Eduardo Lara. With another forward player in Carlos Quintero. And he's about to come on. It'll be Renteria who's going off, this could be his last involvement here. Eduardo Lara, Colombian coach, be so frustrated. His team haven't been outplayed. They've conceded a goal from a set piece. They're still in it. He's able to throw extra attackers on. Trying to liven things up in attack. He's so frustrated to concede a goal from a corner. They're playing a team that's such full of attacking players. Wonderful attacking players that Argentina have got. Colombia have defended well, They've given away a goal from a corner. Well, there are plenty of England football fans who wish Diego and Maradona nothing but ill. I see a banner up in the stadium, I don't know if you can catch it, celebrating the, the hand of Gordon 1986, but the World Cup without Argentina doesn't really sound right, does it? And that's what could be facing them. It's a bold decision here by Lara, taking off his left-back, Pablo Armero. Sticking on a forward player in Quintero. Always a danger in these situations, Terry, that you end up overbalanced, a bit top heavy, a little bit like Argentina were in the first half. But I think we just look under nine minutes to go, only one nil down. I certainly think it's worth the gamble. The World Cup finals about Argentina is just unthinkable. Lots of Messi, Tevez. 
Con Aguero, Diego Melito. I still think they're qualified, I think they'll qualify comfortably. But this is a massive match tonight. They have to close this game out, get the three points. Because the next couple of games are much trickier, at least on paper, given how poorly they played at altitude. Wednesday against Ecuador will be tough, and then there's Brazil. Nicolas Badiso is about to come on, the inter defender. So they're not short of defenders. Just Maradona chooses to only play three in the starting 11, and that was the problem. It's been a disjointed performance from Argentina. The effort's been great. I think they're working really hard for their coach. I don't care how many fantastic, world class players you've got. The team needs a framework to work around. At the start of this match tonight, Argentina didn't have that. Well, they're trying to take Tevez off, and he wasted all of three or four seconds by not spotting the ball up. And off he goes. Good decision to make about his club future and of course in the next week or so Carlos Tevez with his greatest part for Argentina tonight. I think like the Manchester United fans and West Ham fans previous to that, they appreciate his, his effort, his commitment, his hard work. Argentinian supporters giving out a fantastic send-up. given here is trying to give a free kick well Argentina I think a handball against Zapata and I think understandably so the players weren't quite sure what he'd given trying to play on I'm not sure he gave anything John I think Ferron wasn't sure whether the game was going to be stopped or he was going to put the ball out of play Zapata was the injured player Ferron making the tackle back Looking there to see if Zapata can get back on his feet, carry on with the game. He was just going to put the ball out of place. The referee could allow the physio on for treatment. Freddy Guarín loses his head. It just all adds to the excitement of the final six minutes. Colombia would love it to be an exciting final six minutes. If they can maintain the pressure. Sure, it will be. Argentina would love to just grab another goal or control the game and see it out, but they've got the players to do that. Whether they will is a wholly different question. Yepes has been caught. Oh, and I thought he'd been caught in possession. Referee said free kick. Closed down quickly there by Messi and Mascarano. It does give Colombia the opportunity to, to put the ball into the box. Get bodies in there, it's going to be a straight delivery. Flipped in and flicked on. Yepes won the ball. It's comfortable save for Randuha. on the set piece there and it's been out of deflection to cause and do have any problems in goal he's the hero of the occasion for Argentina so far I think a bit little bit of elevation on this set piece Argentina defenders some problems. Well, that's flicked on by an Argentina defender and kept that in play there. And Duhar, good footwork. Colombia will be disappointed not to have made him busier on his international debut. That's going to be the frustrating thing from the Colombian perspective that three teams that Argentina and Brazil 
just get outdone by a piece of magic from someone, Lionel Messi or Kaka. Tonight, it looks as if they could lose this game on the, on the back of the, not defending the corner properly. Big central defender, Kaka Diaz, popping up with a winning goal. Sometimes when you play these better teams, better players, just get undone purely for ability, you have to hold your hand up. Tonight, it looks like Colombia might get beat by a set piece. Argentina do with this? Just try and run the clock down or is Messi about to try and pounce? It's foul. Effectively eight of a good few seconds there. Yeah, I think we had two minutes ten seconds when those two had the ball. They could have kept it there the remainder of the match. They might well go at it again. Often see sides do this and usually comes to nothing, the ball is given away again within seconds, but Messi and Veron, who knows, they could hang on to it for a while. But Messi now puts it into the middle, over the head of Melito. Ainsay was forward in the penalty area. I'm not sure quite what the point is, the central defender pushing up. I'm sorry, the left back now as he's playing. Attacking a set piece in the, the last moments of the game. Job is at the back, defending, keeping the clean sheet, nailing down these three points. Zuniga goes on, there is no free kick for Argentina, and it's a promising looking ball that Zanetti had to deal with. Didn't deal with it that effectively, no free kick again, says the referee. Guarin is down, play goes on. Vargas, desperate challenge by Mascarano. But effective as that just been kept in, it has. That's a bit of relief for Argentina. Now, if they win this, they could have been through, but they haven't, so Colombia have it. Good challenge by Veron. It's all over the place at the moment. Any thought of formations gone out of the window. And this time it's Zanetti trying to run it out of the back again, which he does to a fault at times, but he's got away with this one. A scrappy period of play, wasn't it? Benji ends up with Zanetti running out of defence. I think the best he could have got from that effort was the set piece. Terrier giving away the free kick. Maradona just can't wait for the final whistle to go. But it might be a happy last couple of minutes now. Yepes has done well against Messi. Just wonder, Terry, if you look at this, two minutes to be added on. Your answer's going to have to be brief, but if you're one of the, the top experienced coaches in international football, for all of their quality players, you sort of, you'd fancy, you wouldn't be too scared by Argentina, put it that way. No, I think uh, a lot's got to be learned by Maradona if they do qualify for the finals. I think if you've got Maradona up against the hitting, I think a slightly inferior team, for sure. It's a, it's a Gus hitting type of coach, perhaps a Fabio Capello of England. I think the experienced coaches, particularly in that first half when the team was so out of balance, no matter what world-class players Maradona has at his disposal, they need to have a framework, they need to have more balance. And I was worried for Argentina, Maradona is the coach in the World Cup Finals. I certainly think they've got the potential to win it. They've certainly got the players to win it, they are one of the teams that could upset the probable favourites as it stands, Spain. Half of Messi's teammates from Barcelona. Is Jonas Gutierrez, and he wins a very welcome free kick for Argentina. He does it excellently, doesn't it, Gutierrez? He makes ground down the flanks. On this occasion, buying his team time. This could be a massive three points for Argentina. I did fancy him to win this game. Made hard work of it. Messi shot down by Pereira. And once again, there is a threat of this one bubbling over. 
bearing in mind the number of Argentina players on the verge of a suspension, they shouldn't get themselves involved. The two minutes of stoppage time has now been played. Second yellow card, Pereira was on that occasion as well. Very big call, not sending off Mascherano. Coaching careers sometimes stand or fall on such decisions. This three points will send Argentina a significant step closer to South Africa. Rodallega trying to launch one last Colombia attack. Zanetti only half clears. Leron's desperate for the whistle to blow. And again, bound to say that Colombia have attacked and it's been a little toothless. The Bolivian referee is urging Duhar to kick it out. And there is a cheer around the Monumental Stadium for Maradona from his players, from all of the 60-odd thousand Argentina fans who are hugely relieved to have won this game. It is another big stride on the road to South Africa and it was given to them by of all the players they've got out there, Cata Diaz. They started this game with some of the world's best attacking talent in their starting 11 and they laboured against a Colombia side that struggles to score goals from game to game. It wasn't Messi, it wasn't Verón, it wasn't Aguero, it wasn't Tevez who got the goal. It was the big, no-nonsense central defender from a set-piece. Colombia are unhappy, but in a way, their own lack of attacking, cutting edge that's done this to them. Renteria close to losing his head. Colombia, though, are still in and fighting for World Cup qualification, but Argentina are looking a lot more comfortable now. They've won this one in Buenos Aires, full-time score then, Argentina 1, Colombia 0.